Good morning, Robert Scribbler filming for the AVX with port looking south and east off to that skier. Ah, some very choppy, gloomy, chaotic way of spring here in the two year range. But still a mess. We are looking down on the waves from behind about 30 feet to ask about uh, give a maybe a smaller impression of the waves than they actually are. It's really the, the main factor here is it's a mess. But I'll show you the coastline looking south and you can see it's just kind of rolling in with very little in the way of form crumbly waves that just really don't seem to know what they're doing and then looking off to the north you can see these foamy uh, combers out near the end of the pier uh, near the mid middle of the pier so looks like some four footers forming up on the uh, northern sandbar here as they once again break very chaotically no surfers in the water. I, I might get in the water, do a little gravel session, try and catch something, getting ready for the uh, Witch Cat Craft uh, surfing event where they spin a wheel and give you whatever board uh, the Wheel of Fortune lands on. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out because I've been like, or, like surfing and kind of specializing in uh, the same board. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll see, it's going to be fun. Uh, and that's really the, the reason for it all, just to get down there with uh, down the road and uh, swells of brewing and WRB and uh, Witchcraft and all the sponsors that are putting together this great benefit for um, the Outer Banks uh, community. So uh, check it out, they've got lots of various events going on with both down the road and uh, witchcraft and it looks like just a fun series of events and we are definitely going to be out there just off with some wells of brewing on saturday october the 7th uh picking off a random board and uh trying to make something out of it hopefully the ways won't be like this <laughs> but in any case regardless of conditions we'll head out and give it a shot I'm going to walk down to the uh, north end of the pier as I get into some of the local official observations from the buoy data and wave monitors and model data for surf across the Outer Banks and uh, across parts of the Mid-Atlantic. And I did want to show you again how high up the beach um, water is. We've had that persistent northeast wind just pushing the surf up, up the beach. And you can see the multiple tide lines, uh, some of them stretching up to the dunes at high tide. And that's just what happens when we get this persistent northeast wind. Thank goodness it hasn't been persistently gale force. If it had, it would have been much worse. Um, that did happen a long time ago, um, back on March 7th in the late 1960s that was the ash wednesday storm where a series of low pressure systems just parked themselves offshore blew a consistent gale force wind onshore and that linked up with an astronomical high tide to produce a 13 foot storm surge um, and that's one of the things that can happen out here in the outer banks and on the east coast though very rare for such an event to occur but uh, yeah, we have had persistent northeast wind, so it's just been a real mess and choppy and sloppy with uh, some high tides. All right, getting down to the official wave reports based on monitor, buoy, and model data right now at Nags Head. We've got two to four foot waves, choppy conditions, east northeast swell at 3.9 foot and nine seconds. Northeast winds at 15 miles per hour, air temperature 71, ocean water temperature 71. Up to our north in Virginia Beach, we've got two to three foot waves, slightly choppy conditions. Down south in Rodanthe, it's chop at three to four foot. East northeast swell at 4.3 foot and nine seconds. Northeast winds at 18 miles per hour. 
air temperature 71, ocean water temperature 72, and at Fox Gen 3 to 4 foot plus choppy conditions, east northeast swell, 3 point, I'm sorry, 4.3 foot and 9 seconds northeast wind, 16 miles per hour. Air temperatures 71 degrees. Ocean water temperatures 72 degrees. And last of all, at Frisco, 2 to 3 foot slight chop. Northeast winds 13 miles per hour. East swell at 3.1 foot, moving in pretty parallel on the shore there. 5 seconds. 72 degree Fahrenheit. Air temperatures, ocean water temperatures 72 degrees as well. And from our friends at the National Hurricane Center, our good scientists, buds that are providing us with all of the tropical weather data, we are still monitoring Philippe, which is a dogged storm that has managed to hold together despite some very serious wind shear trying to tear it apart. Uh, still remains a tropical storm with 45 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. This dogged system is to the northeast of Puerto Rico and has been tracking generally a bit more to the west than expected, but now expected to make a short turn toward the north, toward Bermuda. Swell from Philippe is um, potentially going to bring some more favorable conditions come Friday through Saturday. If Philippe does get close enough to the outer banks, and manages to ward off a cold front sweeping in from the north. We get that nice sinking air around the tropical cyclone, which might help to calm down the winds a little bit. We shall see. Now, according to the wave monitors, conditions expected to improve a little bit on Friday and Saturday with some calmer winds, but a front coming in from the northwest might uh, mess things up a bit. We'll just have to see. Um, there are some locations there looking potentially pretty good for Saturday, particularly uh, possibly Buxton. Up here, it's a crapshoot. Uh, so for the witchcraft surf comp competition, could be choppy like this mess, but with big waves. <laughs> and um, so uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. Thanks for joining me for this session of the OBX Wave Report. And as I always do, I'd like to ask you guys, to please do everything you can to help speed the transition to clean energy. Uh, mass deployable clean energy at the present being wind, water, solar, and electric vehicles, as well as all the electrification and batteries that help to enable these clean energy systems. There is certainly research being done on a number of other clean energy systems that aren't as mass deployable at present. And if they do become mass deployable systems like uh, fusion, uh, geothermal, uh, wave power, um, and um, just a number of uh, renewable and or zero carbon emitting energy sources. If they do become mass deployable, we'll start giving them a shout out here. But um, let's all get behind the clean energy transition and start doing it now because we're seeing the effects of climate change everywhere and on our coastlines in particular we're very vulnerable here in the outer banks we've got a 5.5 millimeter and accelerating rate of sea level rise every year uh, that might not sound like much but over the years that accumulates over the course of a century that's nearly two feet um, and that's serious when you consider how high the high tides are hitting and how um, the climate crisis itself is making the storms more intense if you get more intense storms riding in on higher seas that's just not very good for those of us living in the outer banks and on the coastlines generally and then also climate change brings those nasty ocean heat waves which hurt the health of the oceans and help to amplify those storms and also brings also um ridiculously nasty ocean acidification which hurts our calcareous organisms and uh, really impacts our coral reefs. Um, coral reefs looking at some grim times ahead if we don't stop fossil fuel burning very soon. All right, so thank you for joining me for this Wednesday, October the 4th session of the OBX Wave Report. I'm gonna get out into the water and try and grovel a bit, see if I can catch a few waves in this chop and slop. Uh, see if I can get my skills back up for this uh, contest coming up um 
it could be a total mess or it could be nice depending on what the various storm systems do thanks for joining me once again